Hi Gravenhurst! Welcome back to Gravenhurst Public Library's Thinkers and Tinkers Lab Home Edition. As always, I'm Jen and I'm with you every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. doing fun STEAM activities. So that's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics activities that you can do at home. Today, we're doing another awesome science activity. I'm going to teach you how to conduct your own scientific nature inquiry. But what is an inquiry? An inquiry is basically like a question. It involves asking about something that you're really interested in. You could ask, why do different trees have different bark? How did a rock become a rock? And how did it get here? What's it like to see through the eyes of an insect? What are pine cones? Why do trees have pine cones? Why do some trees not have pine cones? Inquiry questions normally start with one of the five W's. Who, what, when, where, and why. We also add how onto that. Now, more complicated questions. Questions that are a little bit harder to answer normally start with why or how. Simpler questions Questions that are a little bit easier to answer normally start with who, what, when, and where. So keep that in mind during our activity today. Altogether, today's activity has four steps. Number one, observe. Number two, inquire. Number three, research. And number four, report. Let's do it together. Step number one, observe. Observe basically just means to look and see and notice things in the natural world around you. For step number one, observe, we're gonna start with what's called a sit spot. In a sit spot, you find a nice quiet place, alone and away from everyone, and in nature. And then you just observe what's going on around you. Think about your senses during your sit spot. What do you smell? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? In your sit spot for about 5 to 15 minutes and just check out what's going on around you. Step number two, inquire. Inquiring just means to ask questions. You have to find your inner curiosity and wonder about the world. You have to ask a question and really, really, really want to know the answer. Now that we've finished our sit spot, we can start step number two, which is to inquire. We're going to do an inquiry walk. During an inquiry walk, you basically just walk around and ask questions. You can look closer at things that you observed during your sit spot. You can explore, you can touch and feel, and move around. Just make sure to always be asking questions. You can write them down or say them out loud. It's up to you. Are you ready? Let's do an inquiry walk together. I wonder what kind of plant this is. What makes trees fall down? How does moss choose where to grow? Is that a spider web? Why does the bark come off trees? Do ferns only grow in the sun, or do they grow in shaded areas too? How did this water get here? What kind of tree is that? What type of animals live in this forest? Now that we're done our inquiry walk, we get to pick which question we want to research. I really liked the question, how did water get here? How did the lakes that we have in Canada, that we have in Muskoka, how did they get here? Where did they come from? So that's going to be my question. For your question, remember, if you're new to research, stick with a simpler question, a who, what, when, or where question. If you're experienced in research and you want to try something a little harder, 
try a why or how question. Step number three, research. Research just means to look up the answer. You can use a book, you can ask a family member, you can watch a video, or search it up on the computer, whatever works for you. When conducting your research, start out simple. Ask your mom or dad, call your grandparents, text a friend, ask a family member or anyone in your neighborhood who might know the answer. Next, try looking it up in a book. Do you have an encyclopedia? Do you have a dictionary even? Check to see if that'll help you to answer your question. Finally, you can use your computer, but we have to go inside for that. When conducting research on a computer, I recommend using a kid-friendly search engine. So you can either use Kittle.co or you can use Gravener's Public Library's World Book Kids. You need a library card for that one though. I'll put the links to both in the description of this video. Here are five important tips for an effective Google search. Tip number one, type in only simple search words. You only want to use important key terms in your search. Tip number two, if your first search didn't show the results that you were looking for and you couldn't find the answer, try rephrasing your search terms. Try new words and get more specific. Tip number three, Use the results that come up on your computer to tell you what other words you could be using to search, what other keywords or helpful words. You can use synonyms, and normally there's also a section that pops up and it says, people who searched this also looked at. Those types of things can be very helpful in an effective search. Tip number four. If you have a phrase or a set of words, or even a sentence, that you want to come up in an exact order, put quotation marks around it. So for example, if you want to search the phrase raining cats and dogs to find out what it means, put quotation marks around it so it'll show up in all of the documents and all of the searches as the full sentence, as the full phrase. If you don't put the quotation marks, what could happen is you could have a website that says, we were making it rain money and then I ate a hot dog and next I took a cat nap. That has nothing to do with raining cats and dogs, even though it has all the correct words. Tip number five, use your best guess spelling. Spelling doesn't have to be perfect. Normally a search will help correct your spelling. And don't worry at all about punctuation, unless you're using quotation marks. Check out this sample search for my inquiry question. How do lakes form? To start, I'm going to go to kittle.co up in the URL. Kittle.co. Enter. This takes me to Google's kid-friendly search site. Next, I'm going to type in my question. How did Canada's lakes form? Remember, I'm not using punctuation, and I'm using my best guess spelling. I'm gonna ignore all of these things up at the top because they say advertisement, which means that they're ads. The search engine is correcting my spelling and punctuation for me. So I can click this and it'll fix everything. Next, I'm gonna skim through all of the results to see if one of them answers my questions. Hmm. Maybe I need to reform my question. Let's rephrase it. How do lakes form? Much simpler. I'm gonna click on the first link that came up. Next, I'm gonna skim read this document. I'm gonna skim through this website to see if it answers my question. So lake facts for kids. What is a lake? So it tells me what a lake is. The difference between lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams, that doesn't answer my question. How do lakes form? This next section answers my inquiry question. All right, it looks like I found my answer. Are you having trouble going through all of the websites that came up? Does your screen look a little cluttered? 
That can be intimidating, I get it. So, in the description of this video, I've posted a link to an infographic that's gonna help you to skim through the websites and find the best one to answer your inquiry. Check it out. Step number four, report. Report just means to share your findings, to share your answer with everybody. There's no point in conducting a scientific inquiry if you don't share what you find with the world. Now that we've done our research and we found our answer, it's time to report your findings. You could create a presentation for your parents. You could write a speech. You could make a poster. You could even draw a picture. You could make your own video. Or my personal favorite, you could leave a comment in the commenting section of this video and let me know what you found out. Let me tell you what I found during my inquiry. My question was, how do lakes form? I found out that lakes form in a number of different ways. Basically, a giant hole in the ground called a basin fills with water. So a basin can form by glaciers scraping across the ground. It can form by a mud or landslide. It can form when tectonic plates move around. When glaciers melt, the basin fills with water or rivers and streams slowly start to trickle in. Even rainwater can cause a lake. Another really cool lake that can form is on top of a volcano. If a volcano hasn't erupted in a while, the crater on top of it can fill with water. How cool is that? Well, thinkers and tinkers, now that we've reported our findings, we're done the scientific nature inquiry. We've done it all. We asked questions and observed. We researched and reported. Great work. So please, please, please leave a comment in the commenting section of this video. Tell me what your inquiry question was and what the answer was. I'm dying to know. And don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss new STEAM activities every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. As always, Graveners, I'm Jen, and I'll see you next week.